the Geeky Girls Knit Podcast. I'm Cece, also known as Java Pearl. I'm Damaris, also known as Damaris Dash a bit weird. And we're glad to have you today. I'm trying to do cast on a sock toe. That's why I'm looking down. Um, today is Wednesday the 30th of September. That means tomorrow is our birthday month. Halloween begins. And uh, this is episode 160. On the 30th. What? It's 60. On the 30th. Oh, 160 on the 30th? Yeah. Except for 160 is not divisible by 30. Evenly. I mean, it's divisible, but it's not divisible evenly. 150 was. Sorry. I, I'm just speaking the truth in love. Okay. Okay. Uh, we'd like to say a big welcome back. We love you guys. To our returning viewers. And a big hi uh, to any new viewers. Thanks for giving us a shot. We hope you enjoy the show. So, Mayor, after having a couple of weeks of nobody new joining, I mean, nobody new introducing themselves in the group, we have several this week. So, why don't you give a shout out to everybody who introduced themselves? Okay. Lizzie B. Tiffany, who is Texas Woman 5031 from Texas. Louise, who is Angles Arc Yarn from the UK. Mm -hmm. Wendy, who is This Yarn Mom from Colorado. Kristen, who is Crazy Knitting Fool from Michigan, and Renee, who is Comfort and Soul from Missouri. Welcome. We're so glad to have you guys, and thank you for introducing yourselves. So, Mayor, if somebody's not a member of our Ravelry group, what should they do? Join. And then what? Introduce yourself in our introductions thread, and you'll get a shout-out on our next episode. That's right. Well, we have a lot to talk about. Um, our, our shelf overfloweth with yarn again, except for, you know what? I didn't buy a single skein of this yarn that's back here. We have lovely people who have sent us lovely yarn, and we love them very muchly. So we probably should get started so we can talk all about it. Here we go. And now we're going to talk about what's on our needles. So we're going to start with shared projects since we're working together on two projects. Yes. So why don't you start with the first one? Um, I'm knitting on this uh, Doctor Who baby blanket. Take two. Take two. Yes. And it incorporates some of the Doctor Who dishcloths by Holy Narp, who is Lindsay. Yes. And it's on US 6s, which is 4 millimeters. And right now I'm using the West Yorkshire Spinners in Air Valley DK in the white, gray, and blue colorways. Yes. Yes. I so I haven't gotten done. very far. So what... Uh, I'm sorry. My I don't know what I did. This is what I get for knitting while we're talking. I like tangled the ball in the cable and... Okay, so what are the squares that you're working on right now? Uh, this one is Jelly Baby. This one is your favorite. The Angels Have the Blue Box. And Bad Wolf. Bad Wolf. So, you're making progress on them, though. Yeah. So, just keep working. I have her very busy right now doing sample knitting for me as well. So, And then the other one that we're working on together... I couldn't remember what bag it was in, is the Fly Away Blanket by Tin Can Knits. We're calling it Fly Away with the Doctor because it is taking all the colors from the other baby blanket and using them in this pattern. And I'm on US 7's 4.5 mil needles. Let's see. And the main color for the blanket is going to be the West Yorkshire Spinners Air Valley Erin in the light brown colorway. So here is the first square, and there, there's long ends because of how they have you sew them together. So that's why they're like that. So this one has a, uh, the contrasting is the charcoal in the West Yorkshire Spinners Air Valley Erin. And then I did both of the squares that have the, they're the Air Valley Erin in the four screen colorway. So, um, so that's three squares out of 16. 3, 6, 9, 12, yeah, 16 squares. So next up, I need to do three squares with the plum contrast in them. So um, I was planning to start one of those. <sighs> I have a mess in my lap. I was trying to put my socks that I'm knitting in this bag. and That's not where they belong. Um, I was going to start... A plum square last night, but I tried to finish your birthday socks first, and that took the rest of the night. So, all right, that is all. Those are both combined projects. So now, why don't you tell us about what you have on your needles? Um, um, 
Secret things. Secret things, yes. In this bag, all you can know is that it's secret pumpkin spice socks, and it's on the US 1.5s, 2.5 millimeters. And it's in rainbow heirloom yarn. That's all you can know. So, but you will get, oh my gosh, you guys, it is gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. More than I even expected, gorgeous. Emily did an amazing job with the yarn. So, um, I'll talk about the kits in Yummies because, mm -hmm. yay, I want to celebrate. Um, and then what's the other thing you're working on that's a secret? I stopped it. Oh, because you're doing that. But you did knit on it this week. I don't, I don't know. You did because, um, because you didn't start on those until like Saturday or something. So I'm also working on a secret Doctor Who cowl. Uh, it's on US 4, 3.5 millimeters, and the yarn the Shemu makes silver twinkle sprite sparkle sock yarn. Yeah. So you've stopped that because I'm not going to release it till around Christmas when River Song comes back to Doctor Who. But Pumpkin Spice releases in just a few weeks. So you flip flopped. Mm -hmm. So, all right. Do you have anything else on your needles? No. All right. So what's on your needles? Let's see, she has to ask me. That's nice. I'm just harassing you. Okay, I have a lot on my needles. Okay, sorry, I got myself confused. Because there's four things listed, but one of them is on hold. And so I confused myself. So first up, I am knitting Bumble Hats. I'll show you some finished ones in FOs, but this is Bumble Hat the third, and it's a gift for a little friend. A wee little friend. Um, this is the Bumble Pattern by Tin Can Knits. I'm using US 5, 3.75 mil, and US 10 and a half, 6.5 mil. And this one is in Cascade Yarns 220 in the Christmas Red, Highland Green, and Gris colorways. So, um, I don't have a whole lot more because this one is in the baby size. So I think I'm about halfway to being where I need to be to start the decreases. So, um... Yeah, those go pretty fast, especially since it's the such large needles for the main part of the body that um, it just flies by, really. Um, I'm still working on my zigzag blanket, which is a pattern by Frankie Brown. It's a free pattern. Did you see her new pattern that was released? Um, it uses the concept from the original tin stitch um, pattern but then it arranges it in a cool new way. So if you haven't looked at that, check it out. Um, I'm on US 4, 3.5 mil needles, and I'm still working with the same yarn as I was last week. Um, it is, I'm looking for the paper. It is Purple Goddess Design in the Silver Lining colorway. And so I'm halfway through this stripe. I'm trying to see how I can do this without. Okay, there we go, maybe. So, there. So I was there last week, and so I've done seven of the zigzags. So that puts me halfway there. Um, so I won't be done with it this stripe by next week, but I'm making good progress with the zigzag a day. And then I told y'all I was casting on socks because I finished Damaris's birthday socks. So next in line is birthday socks for my friend Katie. Um, I'm using my free vanilla cappuccino sock pattern. I'm on US one and a half, 2.5 mil needles, and this is Knit Pick Stroll. It barfed out the top, that's why it looks funny up there. Um, in the Cupcake Multi colorway. I have two 50 gram skeins of it, and I literally just cast on. So I'm doing the toe magic loop, and then I'll switch over to my Zoom Zoom needles, because that'll make it so much faster. And that's everything I have on the needles. But I have a lot of FOs. So we probably should show you those. Here we go. And now we're going to talk about her finished projects. Four this week. Four. Actually, is that four? Is that right? One, two, three, four. In sign language? No, I think it's just four. Or is it four? I don't know. Anyway, four. Four finished projects this week. Um, first up is my weekly preemie hat. This is number 39 from the for the year. Um, this is from my free top-down preemie hat pattern on Ravelry. On US 6 is 4 mil needles, and the yarn is Lizzie's, Lizzie's Wool Blend DK in the orange and cream colorway. So this is the same yarn I used last week, but I just flip-flopped them and made cream the main color. So that turned out really cute. 
then I said I was doing a lot of bumble hats. So this was bumble hat the first. Um, same info as the last one, um, Tin Can Knits. And I used the Leftovers West Shortshire Spinners Air Valley DK in the Knitterbocker Glory colorway. The pom-poms, almost as big as the hat. You should have made the next size. Oh, you don't have it. I don't have the next size smaller. But I am going to tell, this is a gift for um, friends that are having a baby. I am going to tell her that I put it on there so that if they wanted to take some fun pictures, they can. But then I'm going to show her that she can cut it out and just have a warm winter hat. So this one I turned inside out because with the way that the color um, of the, the color of the yarn did, I thought it looked cooler inside out. Here's here's what it looked like right side. And it's nice and pretty, but I just really liked um, the texture of it with the, the slip stitches on that side. So there's that first one. Here's the second one, which, so that one was in the new newborn size. Yeah, that one is in the newborn size. And then this is the same yarn that I'm currently working with. This one is in the child size. The pom-pom is more proportional. proportional, but the mom is also a knitter, so if she wants to cut the pom-pom off, she can. Um, so this one is in the Cascade Yarns 220 in the Christmas Red Highland Green and Gris colorways. Um, so I went with right side out on this one. Let me show you what the wrong side looks like. So that's what the wrong side looks like, which is pretty, but I didn't like the look of this seam here where I carried the yarn up. So I went with right side out on this one. So this was number two. And then, then I'm still working on number three and then there's numbers four and five still to do. They'll be in different yarns than, than these ones, so. And then last night I finished Amaris's Sweet 16 birthday socks. Mm -hmm. I am so proud of myself that I finished them and it's not even your birthday month yet. I know. So this is my free vanilla cappuccino sock pattern. Um, I did these young US one and a half, 2.5 mil needles and the yarn is West Shortshire Spinner Signature 4 ply in the wood pigeon colorway. So, and then here's the other one. I just didn't put it on a blocker. So yeah, so the, I did 64 stitch for her with my Modified short row heel using shadow wraps and that's the height she wanted with the twisted rib cuff She can't have them until her birthday though They haven't been blocked yet because I literally I like, just bound these off last night um, And I knew they wouldn't be dry by today. So happy birthday Maris in 14 days Yeah, two weeks from two, two no, weeks from weeks. yesterday. Yes 13 days But you know what? Your birthday is sooner. Sunday is my birthday. We're gonna go have yummy lunch. I know. And coffee after church. But our friends are coming over on Friday night to celebrate both of our birthdays. She makes yummy food. She's bringing dessert. Mm -hmm. And I think it's gonna be yummy. I know it will be yummy. And we're making enchiladas. Yes. I'm not making the guacamole this time. I cheated and bought it because there's too much going on with retreat stuff. So, um, anyway, we got distracted. Happy birthday in a couple of weeks. Mm -hmm. Did you do the baby hand? Yeah, that was the first thing I did. Oh. Remember, because I just flip-flopped it from last week. So, I, d I need to see about getting the pom-pom makers in the in between sizes. I don't know if it's one set more that I need or if it's two sets. Because the one I use for this, uh, this is the biggest one of the extra small set. So I think there might be a small and a medium set. I should send a message to Jess and see. Because that's where I bought them. So, all right. Well, that's everything. Hats, 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 hats. And socks. The end. Let's move on to yummies. And now it's time for our favorite part of the show. Yummies! What are yummies, Mare? Yummies are our current favorite things, things we like, things we want to talk to you about. Yummies. So you want to start? Um, sure. I got some yarn in the mail this week from Lindsay. Who's, her name is Ling. Yes. And I met her at I Knit Fandango. Yes. 
and then you met her at Great London Yarn Crawl at the Pop-Up Market. So what? why did she send you yarn? For your birthday. Oh. Okay. Okay. Yes. Okay, so you want to show us? Yes. So tell and us about them. This is the other one. They're both the Sakuso O. At base, I think so. At base, and this one is the Smock colorway, and this one is the Into Darkness colorway. So she, I, we were, when we were talking, I, somehow it came up that Damaris was a really big Star Trek fan, and, and Ling didn't have the yarn with her, but she sent it to her for her birthday. That was very sweet. Thank you, Ling. Thank you. So you'll have to make something fabulous. Maybe a sock hat hat out of one of them. Yeah. Or a shawl. You could make a pretty shawl. With both of them together. That'd be fabulous. All right, next. I exceeded my goal for the pumpkin spice kit. So um, my I Love You More Than Pumpkin Spice sock kit, uh, the pre-orders ended on Saturday and I went way above my goal of how many just to sell. So I'm really pleased about that. So now we are in the midst of getting everything together. I've put in, um, given the final numbers to all the vendors that I'm working with to get the stuff and um, those will be shipped out before the retreat. So I'm very excited about all of those. So thank you to everyone who bought one. Um, thank you for your support and um, excitement about the kit. I'm really excited um, to share it with y'all. So um, the pattern will be available for individual sale after the kits ship. So just stay tuned for that. Um, okay, then you and I both got a parcel from Eileen who is Twisting Pearls. This was the card that was in it and she said she used to work in this building but now she's across the square. This is the key tower. It's like one of those optical illusion things it feels like. You know what I'm talking about? So Eileen sent us these lovely tokens. Mine says grace. Hope. Yours says hope. So she told me that she bought these at the start of the year and was waiting for the right time to send them. And I sent her a message back um, and said that this was the perfect time because things had gotten so, have been so insanely crazy with patterns being designed and coming out and all the retreat stuff and everything that I had honestly forgotten that my word for this year was grace. So this is a perfect reminder. It's very tactile. I really, so it sits like right above my keyboard so that I can see it every day. So, um, and then she sent you some, no, not that, that. I got a card too. So this one is upside down. Kitty. This one is written in. Then I Okay, I'm sorry, it was it was I was not grasping it because one of the kitties is upside down. I didn't realize it was a reflection and I was like, what what? And I got some kitty greeting cards and envelopes. So there's one. That one right there has yarn. And then one I don't know if there's yarn in this that, one. Does that a little yellow? Yeah, there's a little yellow yarn bra. Yeah. And this one doesn't have any yarn, but it's kitties and flowers. And what kitties? Is that yarn at the bottom or those flowers? Flowers. Those are pretty. Look what they did. They knocked down the curtain. Oh dear. Um, so you'll have to think of some special people to write cards to then. Mm-hmm. So, and then she also sent us yarn. So, um, we both got, um, it's Space Cadet, um, mini skein sets. So mine is the Headstrong um, Omber? I think it's just, I think it's Omber. Omber. Um, and this yarn is Oriana 8 Ply. It's 100% superwash merino, and each mini skein is approximately 20 grams of um, of yarn. So there's five of them, so that should be 100 grams. So I'm going to use these. I'm going to use these, I think, in my um, zigzag blanket, and there should be enough for me to do start at the darkest and gradient and then back up and a 
may, probably maybe a third row of the to make the gradated from the darkest to the light. What color is yours? Um, I th I think it's just umber. But there's not a okay. Yeah, so very pretty. So thank you so much, Eileen. We love you. Yeah. Um, and then today we got another parcel in the post. Um, so I am in love with this card. It says every single day do something that makes your heart sing. I think this is going to go on my bulletin board. So this is from Katie from Mint Rain Yarns and she was sending yarn and business cards for the retreat. Um, but then she also sent yarn for us. So why don't you show yours first? I have a pack of a bunch of mini skeins. There's so many. I have so much scrap in the sock yarn now. I don't know if I'm ever going to be able to use it all. Yeah, you're going to have to like... Yeah. You're going to have to like find yeah. some time when you're not knitting sample for me and like whew, do lots of mini skeins or something. And then she sent a bag of yarn for me and these are all... Um, big enough to do stripes in my zigzag blanket. So yes, Damaris is pointing. I got the Hufflepuff like, like she did the socks. Um, this one is police this box. Is I think this one is trick or treat. This one is rainbow. This one is stars and stripes and it stripes. It, it makes stars. Yeah, and it, but it stripes. Do you see the card on it? Yes, but I like that it makes the stars. Yeah. So that's what it should look like. And then there's a purple one that I have to keep Damaris from stealing. And a multicolored one. I think that's all of them. Yeah. So fun. So these will all make lovely, lovely stripes in my um, Zeta blanket. So thank you so much, Katie. Love you. Did we remember to give Ling a love you? Did you give Ling a love you? I don't know. You should give Ling a love you. Thank you. So thank you everyone for such fun I'm just pretending like these are all birthday presents and I'm just opening them as they come and it's fabulous. So thank you to Ling and Eileen and Katie and everybody who bought the pumpkin spice kit. Okay, anything else we want to talk about? All right, let's talk about normal stuff. Hashtag GGK Crafty Pad. Guess what? What? The October list is out. Yes. What's the picture on the list? A kitty. With? A pumpkin. Is it with the one with sunflowers too or just pumpkin? I don't know. I can't remember. It's in the show notes and we're about to show it to you. But we did um, some autumn-y, halloween -y prompts with some normal ones. And yeah, it should be a lot of fun. So if somebody's never participated before, why don't you tell them what it is? Um, it stands for Geeky Girls Knit Crafty Photo A Day Challenge. And we have a list of prompts for each month. And you take a look at the prompt for that day and take a picture related to it. And you post it anywhere you like, but we pick our favorites from Instagram. So like today's picture is... I did it. You know what I did? What? I finished your birthday socks before it was even your birthday month. Mm -hmm. So that's going to be my picture today. I'm going to take a picture of her birthday socks. Um, and I'm going to hashtag it with hashtag GGK Crafty Pad. Um, so now, what are we about to show them? Two photos from us that we liked and five photos from other people that we liked. Here come the photos. <laughs> So those were the photos, so jump in and participate if you'd like to. We would love to have you. If you um, want to use the Google Calendar, uh, somebody posted in the Ravelry group yesterday asking how to make it work, and so I did a little thing about how to make it work to make it added to your own Google Calendar, so check that out. All right, events. Yes. The Geeky Puff and Knit Palooza is coming soon. Four weeks from tomorrow. Well, actually, if you're watching this the day it goes live, four weeks from today. Ooh. Sign up. Sign up. Well, yes, we do yes. have some spots left, so where do they go to sign up? com. That's right. We also and have classes available. Yes. 
So if you would just want to come take a class or if you want to just come to the vendor market Saturday the 31st from 1 to 3 p.m. Um, at the Gillis Center, um, addresses in the show notes. Um, it's three pounds entry or a knitted or crocheted item to donate to charity to Knitting for Peace. And in case you weren't aware, this is a retreat that you and I and our friend Sam are co-hosting here in Edinburgh from Thursday the 29th of October to Sunday the 1st of November. That is correct. We just jumped into every, I, ju- I just jumped into everything without letting Demers explain what it was. So, yes, we are madly working on things. I had another video chat with Sam yesterday about details. Um, parcels are arriving. <sighs> things have been ordered. <sighs> it's insanity around here. Um... Yeah, so we are just madly working on all that in the midst of everything else. So we hope that you'll come join us if you can. I know there are lots of people that really wish they could come, but if you don't live in the UK, it's a little bit difficult, more difficult to arrange. So we totally understand. We love you guys anyway. All right, geekypuffalonknitpalooza.com. Yes. Yes. All right, let's move on. talk about what we're reading and watching because we're not listening to anything this week nope um i mean well i like to listen to podcasts every week but i just don't talk about those usually um okay so what are you reading i'm reading mansfield park by jane austen and any thoughts to impart upon us not really i'm trying to get through it um slowly but surely so do you know what percentage you're at about no. All right. Are you enjoying it? Yes. Okay. Are you reading anything else? No. What, even for school, you're not. Um. No. Just you were reading like yes. excerpts of things recently. So. Yes. All right. Well, I have taken a little break with my nonfiction book because of the insanity that's going on right now. I'm just finding I cannot focus on the nonfiction right now. Um, I'm still reading fiction uh, at night before I go to bed, but that really is to turn off my brain after the insane day. <laughs> so I'll pick back up on my nonfiction after the retreat is over. So fiction-wise, I finished reading um, from the Discworld series, The Light Fantastic by Terry Pratchett, and um, the next book I want to read is not available right now. Somebody else has it, so um, I'll, I'm waiting on that. So that when I finished that, I also, so I then went to the Magnificent Devices series by Shelley Adina and finished reading A Gentleman of Means, which is the newest book from the series. It was really good. I enjoyed that. And then I got some, um, I got an Amazon gift card um, for, well, the hubs and I did for our anniversary. And so I bought some more of the books in the Dresden Files series but I couldn't remember what had happened. And I thought I was picking up and starting with the last book I had read. But the, the, I don't know, my brain. I actually started with the first book. So I'm just rereading them all. So I reread the first one, which is Stormfront. And the second one, which is Full Moon. And I started on Grave Peril, I believe, yesterday. So it might have been the day before. But anyway. So I'm rereading those um, to get to the ones that um, were new to me that I haven't read yet I mean there's still more I think I still have like six more I need to buy um that are new that I haven't read yet so I came to the series late so all right well let's talk tv why don't you get us started okay um we are rewatching season seven of star trek the next generation and season two of star trek deep space nine we only have two episodes of tng left oh a lot of deep space nine a lot of Tuesdays. And Voyager will come in there. But now, since um, since the fall shows are coming back, we don't get a chance to watch them as often because we're watching new fall shows. So, um, Oh, I can't believe that you didn't like, weren't like OMG about the DS9 episode. What? What? Crossover. Oh, yeah, they went to the mirror universe. 
Yeah, when she saw, like, the screen cap of the episode, she was like, is this the one? Is this the one? And I'm like, I have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> because it was a picture of Kira with the headband thing um, from the Mirror Universe. Um, so, yeah. Yeah, it was crazy. I had forgotten about that. It was that was that was a good episode. So, anything else you want to say about Star Trek? No. All right. We watch. I think we just watched one episode of The Blacklist this week. Yes. Yeah, we're still watching season one. Um, we're both too busy really to watch um, stuff together during the day. Um, the Hubs and I are watching season two of Motive and enjoying that. Um, I'm still in season five of Supernatural. Keeps blowing my brains. Wow, it's crazy. Craziness. And then we're watching the new season of NCIS, season thirteen. What? Season thirteen? I don't I don't think I know any shows that have gone into like a thirteenth season and uh, uh, besides so, like soap operas. Oh my gosh. Thirteen. That's a lot. I thought it was twelve. Thirteen. Um now I'm going to feel really stupid if I'm wrong, but I am 99% sure it's 13. We can search it later. Yes. Um, or you could pick up my phone and go to IMDb while I'm talking. Keep talking. I'll keep talking. So Gibbs had been shot and then his recovery. That's what the episode was about. I'm going to move ahead while you're looking it up. Yes. Keep going. Um, you could have just gone to the IMDb app. I didn't know you had it. Okay, keep going. How do you not know that I have the IMDb app? I look up stuff on IMDb every single day. Multiple times a well, day. Well, the IMDb website is in your history here. I have no idea why. Because I have the app. Hey, keep, keep going. I'm keeping going. Uh, the Hubs and I started season two of NCIS No New Orleans. Yes. Um, and then he and I are watching the final six episodes of Continuum. There's like two episodes left and I'm still like, how are y'all going to wrap this up? Season 13. See, I was right. I was like, so I'm like, how are they going to wrap this up? They have two episodes left to wrap everything up in Continuum. Mm -hmm. So, um, we're watching the final series of Downton Abbey, mm -hmm. which is turned into a soap opera. We did that a while ago. <laughs> but I have to finish watching it, because, yeah. Um, the Hubs and I are watching season five of Once Upon a Time. How is it? How is it? Do we remember that hand motion? I, I do, do they? That's, that's the jumping the shark hand motion. Um, what happened? So there's Dark Swan now. So she's dark. Um, Evil. Yeah. Um, mm. Herbal Stillskin is not. She took nice the place man. of. No, she took the place of Rumble Stillskin as the dark, dark one. Oh. But the dark part of her manifest itself as Rumpelstiltskin in her mind. Hmm. I see. Yeah. And, oh my gosh, her appearance when she's, like, fully the dark one, like, her hair is, like, almost white, and it's, like, all slicked back to where it almost looks like she has no hair. And, oh, oh, yeah. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, craziness, craziness. Uh, <laughs> the Hubs and I are watching series seven of Doc Martin. Yeah, he's, I don't know, he's, he's, they're having therapy, and he's, like, kind of chilling a little bit. He's not so... Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and season nine of The Big Bang Theory. Penny and Leonard work things out. And Sheldon did an episode <laughs> of... Of, uh, what's the name of this show that he does? Something about flags. It's a, it's a web show that he does. About flags. Something about flags. But he, Amy had been his co-host. And since they broke up, he, and he's very angry with her. Because she broke with him, up with him not knowing that he was about to propose to her. So anyway, he did this episode of, about the flags. Where he's talking about countries who, who ended up fighting each other, but he made like every, he, he made every situation be about, about somebody behaving like Amy. And so he's talking about Amy, but not talking about saying it's Amy. And she got really mad and she's screaming at him through the door and it was really funny. 
Okay. Yeah. Um, you talk about the next one. Um, we're watching season eight of Castle as it airs. I wanted to cry. Do you know why I wanted to cry? Why did you tell? Because Beckett left Castle. I can't believe it. And my guess is that Alexis is going to go join up with, what was the lady's name? I don't know. That helped her? I don't know. Anyway, whatever her name was, I think she's going to go join up and work with her. That's my guess. We'll see what happens. And the hubs and I are watching NCIS LA. Yep. And then, are you ready? Doctor Who 9.2, The Witch's Familiar. So let's see now if all of my notes that I took while rewatching it make sense. They might not. Let's see. Why does the doctor always survive? He always assumes he's going to win. That's why the doctor always survives. Mm. My grammar or apparently... Um, Your punctuation is off. Well, and autocorrect, too, because I think I was doing it on my phone, like, while I was knitting and watching. So, um, Missy had a pointy stick that was her weapon, and Clara asked her if she can have one, and Missy was like, no, get your own pointy stick. This is my pointy stick. And then the doctor in Davros's chair, that was hysterical. He's, like, driving around like a go-kart. <laughs> it made me laugh. Did it make you laugh? Sure. Yeah, I thought so. And Davros had a personal force field. And we learned that Daleks can't die, but they do disintegrate. And the sewer underneath um, um, the city is a graveyard for the Daleks that have disintegrated. The word for graveyard is the same as for sewer in Dalek language or whatever. Um, and then again with the snakes, seriously, why does it always have to be snakes? Snakes are bad. Um, okay, and then we learned that Davros is connected to the life force of every Dalek to keep himself alive. And then, <sighs> Missy made Clara into a Dalek. And we also learned that a Dalek's emotions is what causes it to exterminate, want to exterminate people. And Davros thinks he has beat the Doctor by stealing his regeneration energy. But the Doctor knew, and he beat him. So the Daleks in the sewer are now destroying the city. And then Missy tried to trick the Doctor into killing Clara. Oh my gosh. And the Daleks know mercy because the Doctor showed Davros mercy when he was a boy. And so that's how Clara was saved from the doctor killing her. And then, the best part of the whole episode, the doctor says that he's over screwdrivers, they destroyed the line of his jacket, and now he's all about wearable technology, OMG, sonic sunglasses. That's amazing. I need sonic sunglasses. You, you, you don't really have any opportunity to wear sunglasses here. Can I just have sonic glasses then? Sure. To go with my sonic screwdriver. And then at the end, I'm not sure any of this matters. Friends, enemies, as long as there's mercy. Mercy. And next week's episode is 9.3, Under the Lake. And that is my recap of Doctor Who. Mm-hmm. Sonic sunglasses for the win. All right, anything you want to say about Doctor Who? Nope. Anything you want to say about anything? No. All right, well, I guess we'll move on to the next segment. Here we go. And now we're going to talk about our September, October, November artistic autumnal cal. I have, like, spotlights on me. I need to be like this. Hello, pea friends. That makes it very hard to knit, though. The sun is doing really weird things out the window here. Um, yes, our Artistic Autumnal Cal. It runs from the start of September through the 30th of November. It's for any project you knit, crochet, weave, or spin that you can convince us is related to autumn. How do they do that, Mare? Um, 
pro uh, pattern, pattern name, color, colorway name, design element, purpose. And if nothing else works, you made it in the autumn. That's right. No whips are allowed. You have to start your project September 1st or later and finish it by the end of November. And feel free to double dip, triple dip, quadruple dip in other cows. That's totally fine with us. We have prizes. They're on the screen right now. We'll talk about them in detail in next week's episode. Or you can go to the show notes and read all about the prizes. And a big thanks to all of our sponsors. We appreciate you very much, Lee. Um, what else? The, so each project you finish counts as an entry. So if you finish more than one project, you need to do them in separate in separate posts in the thread mm -hmm. because when we draw for winners we just go by the post number and do the random number generator so if you have three hats that you finished you should post them in each separately instead of all together so that you get three entries instead of one does that make sense mm -hmm. yeah um what else you must be a member of the geeky girls in it podcast group on ravelry to enter and there's a chatter thread We'll lock the thread uh, the morning of December 1st, and winners will be drawn for the, on the next podcast. And for any and all giveaways, prizes, cows, etc., you have 30 days to claim your prize, um, or you forfeit it. So, is that everything? Mm -hmm. Okay, why don't you tell us who finished projects this week? A whole lot knitting, Billin87, Bindi J, Blue Flame Zero, Comfort and Soul, Crochet Chick 31, Denise Chang, Eileen D times 2, Faithful Knitter, Francis in OJD, Gypsy the Dog times 2, Hecky Thump, Cat Wings times 2, Knitosaurus times 3, Little Angel SG2 times 4, Little Panda 518 times 4, Elle McCall, Mimi Teacher, Muzzer Z times 5, Mystery Sewer times 2, Nana PEI times 3, Piper's Mom, RS Island, Smushy Bear, This Yarn Mom times two, Tia and Cat, Tiny Dancer Knits, Twisting Pearls, and Vegan Jilly. Yay! Hey. Great job, everybody. I just dropped my sock. I got it. Um, so keep working on those projects and get them posted in the thread, and you might be a winner. Mm -hmm. All right, let's move on to the next, I was about to say the next episode. The next segment. We still have stuff in this episode. Okay, here we go. And now it's time for Ask the Geeky Girls, the part of our show where you ask us things and we answer them. That's right. So what is the question this week, Mare? This week's question comes from Alice, who is China Knits from the UK. Do you, do you time yourself knitting? I have problems with overusing my hands, but don't realize how bad it is until a day later. The occupational therapist suggested I take regular breaks. Do you do this? And if so, how do you manage it? I don't necessarily time myself. But I do try to, like, if I'm, because I do a lot of my knitting in the late afternoon and evening when we're, when I'm watching, like, telly or we're watching telly together and things like that, um, because I try not to work at night if I can avoid it. Sometimes it's unavoidable, but I do try to um, not work at night, and I try not to work on the weekends. Um, so I'll just try to remember, like, um, I kind of, like, you know, every new episode of some, and when we start a new episode of something, I try to remember to take a break and drink some water and everything. Um, I find that I especially have to pay attention when I'm knitting on larger needles. It doesn't bother me so much when I'm knitting on like these 2.5 mil, which is because I most of my projects that I knit are on 2.5 mil. But like with the bumble hat, I have to remember to take take some breaks because. Um, the bigger needles and the bigger yarn does hurt my hands. Hmm. What about you? Have, do you have any issues with that? I don't think so. I just keep knitting. Just keep knitting, knitting, knitting. What do we do? We knit. Knit. Mwah, 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 mwah. I speak whale. I know you do. I do. Um, so yeah, I don't, like I said, I don't necessarily time myself. Um, and I try to rotate projects I'm working on really honestly. Um, m the usual way I do it is like every new TV episode we watch. Or um, like for example my zigzag blanket. I do one zigzag every day. Um, and then I try to do X amount 
on this project and X amount on this project. So I try to rotate them to where I'm working at least a little bit on everything every day um, just to kind of give myself a break in between, but also to keep a project from becoming just like, oh, gee, I just want to be done with this. I, you know, I try to give it everything focus every day so that it rotates like that. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. I don't know if we answered your question, Alice. Um, I know, like, some people, um, not necessarily for knitting, but, like, they'll set a timer, and when the timer goes off, they have to stop and take a few minutes, um, or, um, I've heard some people, like, reward themselves with X number of minute, of knitting after they've done X amount of cleaning the house, or X amount of work, so... You know, they might work for half an hour and then get to do 10 or 15 minutes of knitting as a reward. So that might be another way to break it up through the day um, so that you give your hands a, a rest. I don't know. What about y'all? Do y'all have any thoughts on this? Um, do you time yourself knitting or do you have ideas for how to take breaks so that you don't have issues with your hands or your elbows? I know sometimes I have trouble with my elbow tensing up. I have an old injury, um, so I have to pay attention and make sure and stretch and everything to that. So, um, yeah, so if y'all have any thoughts on this, post them in the episode thread. We'd love to hear what you have to say. So thank you to Alice for the question. Mara, if somebody has a question, what should they do? Go to our Ask the Geeky Girls thread in our Ravelry group and post it. That's right. All right, well, I think we're ready to move on to the next segment. And that's it. We're to the end of the show. Yep. Oh, wow. Um, so, are y'all ready? Are they ready? I don't know. Do you are know they? what they're ready for? What are they ready for? I'm going to give them an exclusive sneak peek. Of? Of my new sock pattern that's coming out Sunday, October the 4th, which is? Your birthday. Yay! So, um, I collaborated with Boga from Knitting in France. And I met her at um, I Knit Fandango. She was vending there as well. And so the um, pattern that I've come up with is strawberries and cream frappe socks. You and I had fun doing a photo shoot. The nice thing about knitting socks inspired, designing socks inspired by coffee is at the photo shoot, after you take the pictures, you get to drink the coffee. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So strawberries and cream frappe socks pattern is going live on Sunday the 4th October. And here it is. So it's a toe-up sock. Uh, the majority of the pattern is this textured, it's got some lace and cable-y bits to it. Um, I don't know if you're gonna in the detail. Um, that represents the texture of strawberries. So that goes up the front of the sock and then as well on the back of the sock. sock. And then about two inches before you want to end the sock, you do this um, twisted, pattern that gives you the cream on the top of this of your strawberries and cream breffe and then that continues into the cuff just without the twisted stitches um one thing i will say about this is and i had warned my testers that that might be the case that they um almost all had to go up a needle size for the um especially for the leg and some for the foot because the strawberry cable pattern is is a little bit it's, it, um, cinches. Yes, it, it tightens everything up, and so then it's there's not enough stretch to put it on. So they just went up a needle size, and that fixed it. So, um, and I've put that in the pattern to just an FYI. So this is going live on Sunday, the 4th of October, and you'll be able to save 38%. Why? Why? Do you know why? Yes. Tell them. It's because you're turning 38. There we go. You can save 38% on this sock pattern through Sunday, the 11th of October, so for one full week, with the coupon code CC's B Day. It's on the screen. C C S B D A Y. CC's B Day. But that's not all. There's more. There's more. Boga. Oh, well, I should say this first. Um, I've put a link in the show notes where you can sign up for my newsletter to be reminded when it goes live 
and um, to remind you of the coupon code. So if you haven't signed up for that yet, let yet you should because also when you sign up, you get my free vanilla cappuccino sock pattern for free. So you should sign up. Okay, Boga from Knitting in France um, has a special colorway of yarn that she's calling Strawberry Frappuccino. It's a smidge different than this. It's got less white in it, but it um, goes very well with the pattern. Um, and she is reopening her shop on Sunday, the 4th of October. Um, and she is offering a 15% off coupon code um, off of all orders of 5 euros or more. Um, and the coupon code will start when she reopens her shop on the 4th um, of October, and it runs through the 31st of October. And the code is CC's Girls. C C S G I R L S. CC's Girls. And that will save you 15% off your orders. So thank you so much to Boga for doing that. So y'all have gotten the exclusive. Strawberries and Cream Frappe will be live this coming Sunday. So, yay! All right, do we have other announcements? I don't think so. Um, yeah, we're still on track for the next few weeks to record, and then we'll give you a heads up on what will change at the end of the month, just for the retreat. So, um, just a reminder, we are amazon.com and .co.uk affiliates, and if you click through our site when you shop, Amazon gives us a little back. It doesn't cost you anything extra, but it's a great way to support the podcast. So thank you to those of you who do that, and we appreciate you. Um, all right, Mary, why don't you tell them where to find us online? You can find us at geekygirlsknit.com. There are the links to everywhere else we are online. YouTube, iTunes, Ravelry, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, etc. That's right. So with that, we're going to tell you goodbye. We hope you have a great rest of your week. Happy knitting. We'll see you next week. Bye. Bye. You said you were looking down at your sock earlier to make it. Yes, because I was not paying attention to the screen because I was trying to pay attention to my sock and it's down here instead of up here because it's kind of a little awkward to knit up here. But yes, what were you saying about me looking down? Look down, look down, you're knitting on the toe. Look down, look down, how much more do you have to go? Um, about five increase rows. And then I'll move on to the foot. Do you have a song for the foot? Mm. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> and that is Damaris' singing selection from... Now on the foot, knitting on the foot. I can't know. <laughs> this has been Damaris' musical selections taken from... Hey Miz, because it's in my head. Yes, because she keeps listening to the soundtrack. Okay, bye!